Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back. So here's the PCB hot plate slightly bigger edition, which is version two of my previously made PCB hot plate project. The size of hot plate, which is approximately 99 millimeters by 98 millimeters in total. And the heating area, which is approximately 65 millimeter by 98 millimeter were the most significant changes in this project. The previous hot place was tiny measuring only 60 mm by 90 mm overall, with a heating area measures only 60 mm by 55 mm. The new model is powered by the Xiao M0 development board and feature an OLED display that shows the current temperature of the heating coil. Before getting into details about the construction of this project, here's an important question. Does this project work? Yes, this project was a success. We first apply solder paste to this test board before placing all the components on it. Then we place this test board on the hot plate and it reflows in less than a minute. The solder paste used is the regular SNPB6337 which reflow at temperature between 180 degrees Celsius and 200 degrees Celsius. Low melting solder paste will be more effective and faster with this hot plate but regular solder paste will also work. So yeah, this project works. Now let's talk about how it was made and how you can make it in few easy steps. Also, I've posted a complete build guide on Instructables and Hackster.io where you can download the schematic code and other details from. Let's get started. This new hot plate is powered by an Xiao M0 development board and features an SSD 1306 OLED display that shows the current temperature of the heating coil. Xiao was chosen due to its small size and the ATSAMD 21 g 18 microcontroller, which is an ARM Cortex M0 processor. The Xiao development board was made by Seed Studio and it's part of their Seeduino Xiao family. The board is small measuring only 20 mm by 17 mm but it is powerful with a 32-bit 48 MHz ARM Cortex processor, 256 KB of flash memory with 32 KB of SRAM, and variety of communication interfaces such as I2C, SPI, UART and USB. Like the previous project, this version has coil setup that is driven by a MOSFET IC that cuts off the power when certain temperature is reached. Then reconnect the power when the temperature drops, which is currently set around 210 degrees Celsius as declared by this line in the code. This hot plate is powered by a 12 volt 4 ampere source. If you use a 12 volt 10 amp SMPS, the temperature will rise faster and reaches 210 degrees Celsius plus. The current maximum temperature observed is 207 degrees Celsius. I hate to say it, but the temperature reading of this hot plate still need to be fine tuned. The NTC was placed at one edge of the coil and the temperature around that area and the temperature around the center of coil are different as evidenced by the two different readings taken by two different meters. An external temperature meter was temporarily added to determine the temperature difference between the center and the edge of the PCB. PCBs are used here due to the fact that we can create coils directly on PCB layer and use them as heating element. Let me explain how. As we all know when electricity is passed through any material that has some resistance, heat is generated. We make coils for the PCB design. These coils are essentially long copper lines, each one millimeter wide. This coil has a resistance of 2.2 ohms. So if we pass electricity through it, the coil heats up and we can use this setup as a small heating element. Also making a PCB design and getting it fabricated without doing any physical editing is an easy and hassle free thing. By the way, shout out to Seed Studio for providing PCBs and shower board that used in this project. One of the few disadvantages of using PCB as heating element is the fact that the PCB here has a TG rating of 140 degrees Celsius, which means heating the FR4 of the PCB above this temperature will deteriorate the material and burn the board. After 10 to 15 uses, the coil region of this PCB will turn yellowish 
then dark brown and then finally black. The copper traces will also burn out over time, as I found out with my previous mini hot plate project, which is currently in a brown state and has been used more than 20 times. It's still working, but I have a feeling that it will soon burn out. When it does, we can simply change the board and transfer all the non-burnt components to the new board. I made a breadboard version first to see if this sketch works. The LED imitates the MOSFET gate which drives the coil. The temperature sensor is heated by a lighter which raises its temperature. This 10K NTC is encased in a round spade terminal with epoxy and salvaged from an old inverter circuit but an alternative can easily be found on the internet. We connect NTC in series with a 10K register and add the middle pin between NTC and register with pin A0 of Xiao. VCC of OLED goes to the 5V pin of Xiao, ground to ground, A2 is connected to the LED's positive pin, SDA is connected to A4 and SCL is connected to A5. Here's the code that was used in this project. I'm using a lighter here to manually heat up the NTC to mimic the heating coil. The LED stays on throughout, but when the temperature reaches the threshold, which is 210 degrees Celsius, the LED turns off. After a few seconds, when the temperature drops below 210 threshold, the LED turns back on and the cycle continues indefinitely. The schematic of this project consists of three parts or section, which are the following. Buck converter circuit, Xiao microcontroller and an OLED setup, and the coil with MOSFET as switch setup. The buck converter circuit is built around the MPS2314 integrated IC. Monolithics Power Systems MP2314 is a buck converter IC which is a synchronous rectified step-down converter with an input voltage range of 4.5V to 23V and has an output current of up to 3 amps. The MPS2314 incorporates a variety of features including high efficiency, internal switching soft start over current protection, thermal shutdown and programmable voltage output. It also supports a variety of range switching frequencies and can be operated in either pulse width modulation or pulse frequency modulation mode. This IC is commonly used in variety of applications such as point of load regulators, setup boxes, routers and other consumer electronic devices. The buck converter circuit step down the 12 volt source into the 5 volt for Xiao and OLED to work. The second section is the Xiao breakout board which connects Xiao I.O. pins to the OLED screen pins as well as CON3 port which will be used to connect thermistor and the MOSFET gate pin with this setup. A potentiometer has also been added to this board for manually controlling the temperature of the coil. This feature will not be used in this project and will remain idle as it was for future modification. The coil section is straightforward. The coil is connected to a MOSFET as a switch setup that is linked to the input side of the circuit and two diodes are added in series with the coil VCC to slightly reduce the voltage going into the coil. In the PCB editor, we create an outline of 98mm by 99mm and place all the components on one side, then separate the coil zone and component zone with few rectangular slots to keep PCB component from being heated by the coil heat transfer through the FR4 medium. This was an issue that was observed in the previous project. We add coils on top and bottom side of the board with thickness of 1mm for total length of 4329.8 millimeters, which is extremely long. I use all about circuit's trace resistance calculator to determine that the total resistance should be around 2.14 ohms and the actual resistance measured was 2.2 ohms, which was very close. As for the PCBs used in this project, they were sent to Seed Studio for samples. An order was placed for blue solder mask with white cell screen as this was the same color I got for the previous project. PCBs arrived in less than a week which was super fast and their quality was excellent. We begin by applying solder paste to each component pad individually using a solder paste dispensing syringe. 
Next, we pick and place all the components in their place using an ESD tweezer. Following the pick and place process, we place this board on the mini reflow hot plate, which heats the PCB from below up to the solder paste melting temperature. Fun fact, this previously made mini hot plate is being used here to reflow the new hot plate PCB. Following the reflow process, we use a standard soldering iron to add two M7 diodes on the back side of the board. Then we put all the THT components in their proper place, such as the header pin in the shaw and OLED pads, the switch, the DC jack and the capacitor and the inductor. The board is now assembled. Following the board assembly, we connect the 12 volt SMPS and measure the voltage across MPS2314 boost module output, which should be around 5.3 volt. This means the circuit is operational and we can proceed to the next step, which is to connect a thermistor to its CON3 pad. The SMPS used here is a 12 volt 4 ampere, whose input voltage ranges from 100 volt to 240 volt AC and was used to power a 12 volt DC aquarium pump. This is an isolated supply that is relatively safe to handle and this was the reason why I chose this supply. Next we add thermistor in its place using a soldering iron. The thermistor is connected to Shao VCC and A0 pin and a 10k resistor is connected between A0 and ground to form a voltage divider. This thermistor is essentially a resistor whose resistance can change when heat is applied to it. We connect it in series with a 10k resistor and apply 5 volt to it. The voltage divider is used to measure the thermistor resistance which is then used to calculate the temperature. We add OLED display and shao in its place first. Then on each edge we add 4 PCB standoff which lift this PCB from the base and serve as its stand. The board is now completed. Wow. Here's the finished product. A hot plate that works properly and can reach the temperature of more than 200 degrees Celsius, making it ideal for reflowing larger PCBs. Because the onboard temperature sensor was not working properly, we added an external temperature meter's NTC to the bottom side of PCB using Kapton tape, which will keep the NTC in its place because of its heat resistance. The maximum temperature recorded is 207 degrees Celsius, which is high. If we replace the power supply with much higher current one, we can get more temperature readings in less time, but the deterioration rate of the FR4 material will also increase. Overall, this project was a success. A few things that need to be tweaked including the location of the temperature sensor. Currently, the temperature sensor is located on the one edge of the coil. And as we test this hot plate, we discover that the temperature on the outside is different than the temperature on inside. This is due to the fact that inside traces are shorter in length and thin traces have higher resistance than traces near the edges, which are longer. Because the middle trays have less resistance, the center of coil heats up first and the maximum reading are taken at the center of the coil. So the best place to put a thermistor is the middle part. But we cannot just drill a hole and add a thermistor with a nut and bolt because it will obstruct the PCB and cause gap issue. As a result, the best option here is to use thermal epoxy and glue the thermistor to the bottom layer of PCB in the middle region. Then we must fine tune temperature reading by taking reference reading from the precise external temperature meter and change the value of R1 in the sketch. So the onboard thermistor reading and the external reading taken by the meter matches. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. This hot plate is large enough to reflow large PCBs. Not to forget, it's inexpensive and can be rebuilt if the board get damaged. All the documents related to this project are attached if you need any help regarding this project, DM me or leave a comment. Special thanks to Seed Studio for providing PCBs for this project. Do check them out if you need great PCB service for less cost. Peace out and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon.